The conversations continue here at Davos 2024 and joining me now is the chairman of the 15th Finance Commission, N.K. Singh, also been part of the expert group that put together the framework for the reforms that uh, the World Bank and other uh, multi-development uh, agencies will take forward. So thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Let me start by uh, talking to you about the announcement that's made uh, back home on the chairperson of the 16th Finance Commission, Arvind Panagaria, will take over from you. Uh, what's your expectation now for the 16th Finance Commission? So Arun Pangaria is about the finest choice which could have been made. He is an economist of some heft. He was the vice chairman of the Niti IO and a personal friend of mine. I think that uh, the Prime Minister as usual has made an impeccable choice in selecting Arun Pangaria and the challenges which he will face. I mean my the award of my commission 15th uh, will continue uh, till he gives his report. In, he will give his report uh, on 31st of October 2025. Till then, of course, the 15th Finance Commission award, which is normal, mm -hmm. will continue my award for six years. I think his challenges are uh, ha as high as all challenges are, namely not only distribution of resources between the union and the states, but among the states, in terms of the parameters which he, which he selects, and which the Commission chooses to select under him, particularly with the fact that uh, the issues of global warming, climate change mm. are going to certainly occupy not only the attention of the Indian states and the central government, but has a global focus. And that's an area which has been added as a new additional dimension, really, to the 16th Finance Commission. Although, typically speaking, it has adhered to the constitutional requirements it has adhered to all the key components on which finance commissions are expected to make their recommendations. You know, you spoke about some of the additions that the 16th Finance Commission will have to look at. While you were putting together your recommendations as part of the 15th Finance Commission, there was a lot of discussion and debate on the devolution formula that was finally arrived at. Uh, you know, how much of it should be linked to actual performance of states on various indicators and so on and so forth. As the 16th Finance Commission gets down to its business, uh, you know, what is it that you would like to put down on the table in terms of, uh, of guidance? No Finance Commission would be presumptuous to give its guidance to successor commissions. And that's one of the rules which, uh, or a convention, which we have happily followed. I think that each of the Finance Commissions in India have been selected with people of impeccable uh, reputation, impeccable domain knowledge, and it will be entirely up to the Commission to put together a kind of normative formulas. But certainly, the classic ones which the Constitution provides, namely the distribution, as I said, between the Union and the states, and the formula for the distribution within the states, and of course the third tier of government, uh, namely the municipalities, the urban local bodies and the panchayats, as also on the disaster management, have classically now become part of the terms of reference of any finance commission, and they will certainly be there. You know, the, the, the centre and the states are represented here in Davos, and the, the promenade has virtually been taken over by uh, <laughs> India, India pavilions. Well, that's a very vibrant example of, of a federation which is functioning, which is functional, and which certainly wants to make its voice felt. But what are the implications that you see of this sort of vibrant, uh, uh, competitive federalism that is on display here, uh, you know, not just uh, in Davos, but on the ground as well, and the impact and the implications that it has for the economy going forward? I think that in my view, that is a very positive sign. Uh, not uh, a populist federal compact, but a competitive federal compact a competitive federal compact which wants to take the advantage of the world's belief and growing world's belief on India's overall macroeconomic stability, on the fact that the growth story in India, which has begun to flower, is embedded in very enlightened, sagacious, continued political stability with far-reaching structural reforms becoming part of the mainstream of the government's governance policy. 
Well, speaking of reforms, uh, you know, the, the roadmap and the framework that you've put together as part of the committee that worked on the reforms for the World Bank and other multilateral development uh, institutions, uh, given the, the many challenges that the world faces today, there is a sense of urgency on the need for these reforms to move forward and faster. Uh, what's the expectation? What's the hope on that front? So, you know, I, uh, today I'm far more positive. Uh, than I was ever before on that, on the reforms of the multilateral development banks for three reasons. First of all, I think that uh, we put together our two-volume report in record time, addressing a record number of issues on the architecture of the financial module, which would serve the world well. And we were really pleasantly surprised that the leadership with the Prime Minister Modi had provided. He had talked of, uh, you know, Shireen, he had talked of reforming the multilateral development banks in f much before India had assumed the presidency mm. of the G20. And so it was therefore not surprising that after uh, India had assumed the presidency, it was decided to have an expert group which, of which I was privileged along with Larry Summers and a very distinguished membership to put together this two-volume report. Nobody expected that progress would be so rapid. The G20 in the annual, at the annual meeting of the IMF and World Bank in Marrakesh adopted our recommendations. 30 important recommendations which we have made. 30 important recommendations on how to make, them, make the multilateral development banks better, bolder, and bigger. Better in terms of being able to service the clients better in terms of exchanging of ideas, better in terms of multilateral development banks acting in close tandem with each other, mm. bolder in terms of taking informed risk, risk decisions, bolder in terms of being able to harness private capital and to do so in the same fashion as they have harnessed earlier. You know, Shireen, are the $22 billion which has been capitalized in the World Bank, they have been able to lend seven hundred to $900 billion, a leveraging of seven times. But alas, for private capital, they have been more timid. So how to take more informed risk decision in being able to harness private capital? That will make this a bolder, bigger, bigger in terms of being able to lend three times what they have been able to lend so far, by optimizing their balance sheet, mm. and of course, hopefully, recapitalizing the balance sheet, which will enable them to lend not $120 billion all taken together, but to be able to get to close to $500 billion, which when added with private capital and domestic capital mobilization, will really hope to get to the $400 billion mark, which has been generally assumed by global experts of the kind of sums needed for addressing the challenges, not only of development, yeah. of poverty, of shared prosperity, of fragility, but of course global warming and climate change. Yes, and all very large, complex issues that require significant amount of investments and of course uh, uh, leadership to tackle. Uh, but Mr. Singh, I'm going to ask you to put on your former finance secretary hat as well because you've got the budget around the corner, so an interim budget nevertheless. But, uh, you know, we've seen in the previous uh, interim budgets several big ticket announcements being made. 2019 included uh, the PM Kisan Yojana uh, as a key announcement. Uh, what, what would your expectation be? be and uh, uh, given the context and given where India finds itself today, what would you believe the priorities need to be uh, from the budget? Well, I think that no finance minister or no budget or no leadership can be second guessed by anyone, not even an astrologer, <laughs> on the contents of the budget. So I'll abstain in making any uh, comments on, on that issue. But certainly one expects that uh, there would be no rollback on the ongoing reform momentum, uh, on the continuation of a stable macroeconomic framework, on the symmetry which has been achieved between a sound fiscal policy coupled with a monetary policy which has been conducive to growth. I expect these to be continued even during the period of the interim budget before, of course, the full budget which will come in July after the general elections. You've been speaking with leaders here, uh, including uh, you know, people who do have interests in India. Uh, if I could ask you to sum up the mood at this point in time, uh, what would it be? Optimistic, 
expectant bullish as global bright spot in terms of all the enveloping uncertainties. Optimistic, bullish, expectant. That's the mood. N.K. Singh, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us here in Davos. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. We are going to take a break here. The conversations will continue. It's starting to snow, but we're going to be right back with more headliners on CNBC TV 18 after this short break.